So Mori 7.1 is switching it up here with the 2D mode. So we're gonna take a look at it first. And there's also actually a switch that's really helpful for material creation and other workflows. So the 2D mode here, you find it next to the, the orthographic view here. Essentially here, if I go into my objects, you have the main uh, tab here, but you also have a 2D tab. So it's kind of like a, a 2D workspace now. You can uh, 2D operations like patching up uh, textures, making tileable textures and and uh, as I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna make a, like a decal material out of my logo here. So I'm gonna do go in here to my 2D mode, the, take a look here, and this is how it looks by default. I'm actually gonna send uh, this image here as a image into the 2D mode here. So, so I'm gonna right click here and say send image to 2D paint and this is what I get. So, But I wanna create secondary uh, textures here. So essentially like I define the specular roughness. I'm, I'm gonna gray this one. As you see the black point is, is too black and the white point is too white. So I'm gonna first do some grading here. So I'm gonna insert a grade node. I'm gonna take my black point just slightly increase it and Y point just take it down a bit so it's not super uh, you know overblown here I'm just gonna check it with my lots here as well there we go so this one I want to uh, first off here um, save out as a 2d uh, color map I, I want to have transparency so in this 2d mode now this is the first iteration of the 2d mode so I think this one is going to be expand into the future we have here if I go to nodes and 2d and say image right so this is essentially like a write node that writes into the image manager and then you can use those images in other locations like in tallables or whatever. So 2D image write and I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna define a name here. I'm just gonna call this call decal call. I'm gonna hook it up here to that one and then you bake it. And look here now in the image manager, you will see here decal call come up here and you see when I baked it, it also appears there in the uh, image manager. So now here I want to define essentially a, um, a specular roughness map and the bump map here first off. We can take here for essentially my, my paint here. So I'm just going to take a uh, vector split. So there's uh, many ways to skinny cat here. So I'm going to take my vector split. Uh, and merge node and say I want to take the alpha into the mask and I want to have here a color node but I'm gonna create a scalar out of it and say here my essentially base value for roughness value here so say 0.3 in the roughness value let's set set a 2d another 2d right so image right so we're gonna name this decal and now I want to do the same here I'm just gonna essentially borrow this so shift d to duplicate this one is gonna be uh, my 50% gray here first I'm, I'm just gonna merge something else here I'm just gonna take this dirty paint tallable and this one here on top and take this one so I'm gonna first here just do some breakup to my bump so now we have some breakup in the bump there take this bump here and say an image right so decal BMP. So now here in my main graph, I can use this as essentially like a, a texture or in my case, I'm gonna use this project using the projection nodes. So I've already set up here an asset and I only need to essentially drag these. So I have the projectors here. So you see it's empty here. So I'm just gonna take the color map into this node here. I wanna take the specular roughness into that node and the the bump into this node here and we can see here you can see the the bump and the specular roughness there so and now here let's say that we want to do some additional change here maybe i want to i see that i need this like some kind of shadowing or something there on the border or i want to take out that shadow i can go back here to my 2d mode uh, let's see here. i need to touch up some uh, of of this here I just want to work onto my alpha channel essentially here. There we go. Let's take a look here before I bake. I remember how that one looks. Now I'm going to go back here and essentially rebake my color. Speckle roughness, my bump. And now going back here into my uh, projection. You can see here now I uh, changed that and that's updated automatically here in, in the main graph here. 
So this is a really nice addition to 2D workflows and touching up and making like tile balls or just prepping images in general. And the next one we're gonna look at now is the switch node. So I have here in my material defined essentially like a, a metal material that has multiple materials within it. So I have here, for example, gunmetal, vanadium, iron, brass, nickel, etc. Essentially, I've packaged some of my IOR presets that I have defined since earlier. But I have now made like a, a switchable gizmo. And this new switch is essentially only evaluating the active stream. So you can have very complex networks behind inactive streams and it will not bog down more. The only time when it actually evaluates is when you switch from one to the other. It needs to evaluate a new uh, graph while you switch. But after that, it re uh, disregards uh, the previous input. So in my case here, I have designed here a material that has, let's go in and, and look at this switch here. If I go into this one, we can see here, this is what I've done. I, I have four switches that I have linked and this one is uh, switching here between my materials, switches to my IOR, uh, and they are all controlled here. So let's, I can set up something, you can switch between these two so we can uh, just see here what happens, how with this one works. So if I make this new switch like so, you can say here plus and say, Mat B, Mat A, default. So this is up to you how what you named it. So the, the name here is essentially what you're going to switch to uh, using this one. Say Mat B as well. If I now just, I'm just going to demonstrate this with a few uh, like tileables or grunges here. So let's take Smart Mask that is now also bundled here with this version of Mori. So let's say that we want to switch here between this noisy dirt. We want to have this gizmo here as Matt B. And let's take something else, concrete. So now when I look at this here through the switch, you can see a default is the active stream. And you see this one is not active. So if I in the switch now go to Matt A, you see it switched there. And now this one is disregarded and this one is disregarded. So essentially just evaluating this stream. So you can have heavy node graph networks behind the switch without having so much performance loss that if you, for example, would use this merge, if I would do you do something similar with the merge, for example, here, I said that this one is going to be my fake switch, uh, use the, the blend here to, to switch between them. The problem with this workflow is they are both evaluated because we have opacity and all of that. But uh, the new switch workflow is better performant and you can uh, really have multiple very heavy no graphs behind it without. And this is kind of what I did here. Going back to my material, I have here my my uh, material switcher that essentially uh, looks at the IOR values and I set it to gold. Have here a way to say use the material roughness or override base roughness. So when I set this one to override, this slider becomes active. If I set this one to material, it reverts back into the materials roughness. Okay, so I have here my now my base roughness. This is something I switched over to, and I have here my roughness breakup on top. And I also have here a way to essentially, if I go in closer here to say if it's gonna be a 2D or a 3D breakup. So I have a switch for that. So 2D mode, depending on how I tile this one because my UV seam there, if I set it to 3D, this one is not gonna be evaluated, but the 3D will here. It's gonna be really interesting to build materials now for this because I can essentially bundle more things and make more smart materials. So one of the next new features here is smart mask. So before this 7.1, we had a few examples, but now we can actually have here a, a, a somewhat a, a better selection of a smart mask and they are uh, using bake passes for example if i drag this one rusty edges in here yeah you can see it is using curvature so some of them is using curvature some of them maybe a inclusion and curvature and obviously you can 
bake your passes using the bakery now so and you also have some um, additional like 2d placement now this is a bit mimicking what extension pack had with the manifolds uh, but for the vanilla nodes here so if i take a tile node tiled for example here and drag a uh, some kind of image into this one let's take this one before here i had to go into my repeat and say repeat um, and set this to the same it was kind of tedious to do this, but now I can take my 2D place, Gizmo here, and hook this one up to my UV here, control the actual placement now from this node here. So if I now go in here and I'll repeat or rotation, if I now also uh, have an additional, I can now essentially control multiple tile nodes at once. Okay, so another thing here is essentially node packages. So essentially here, if you uh, wanna reuse portions of your network or distribute to someone else, you can essentially now package up and it will take any type of uh, resources that's needed for example, if you have tile balls or whatever you have used, it will then package that so it travels with the package. So that's something that previously could be a bit of a problem when you want to, for example, have a bunch of nodes. You need to know what images need to go with which uh, tile balls, etc. So if I now I'm just going to borrow something from an extension pack here, just say I'm just going to take a tile node here and bring this one in here on top of my network here. We want to now recreate this onto another asset or something similar. So I can select my nodes, right click and go to file, package nodes. It asks me for a location. I'm just going to put this now here on my desktop. Let's uh, delete this one here. So let's say that we are in a new fresh scene here. We can actually now save this to a shelf here as well. So if I create a shelf, a new shelf, and say my packages. Let's import uh, this item here. So my desktop, and this is how it looks. You can actually assign thumbnail, etc. If I now drag this one in here, it will come in and repopulate here and you're ready to go. So that's another uh, very useful addition to the shelf and no graph workflows. Okay, so another thing here that's kind of uh, new here is now if I hit P button, I have presets here and you can also define your own presets here. So for example here, if I would drag here a color into this new shelf, this called color presets here. So let's say that we wanna store this specific color here. I'm gonna drag this this color here into my shelf here and now if I hit my P button again and I can white gray black is normal color there is like the most useful and transparent but you can now here also find your own you can see how I've defined three if I go to the drop down here I can now pick my color there as well if you have requirements and also here backdrops has some additional work here if I make a backdrop see here if i want to move all of this it's hard to do it here you need to be right above this edge there but now if i hit the w button i can now drag even if i'm not on top of this border i can hit the w and drag my essentially backdrop around so that that's useful you can essentially do stuff here zoomed out without having to dive in or exactly drag this border there. Another improvement is if you hit the B button here, you can essentially move the backdrop around without selecting the nodes there. So if you wanna adjust the backdrop individual of the nodes, you can do that as well.